Thank you, Mr. President, and through to the members. During the Salem witch trials, Elizabeth Johnson Jr. was convicted of witchcraft but never executed. She is, in fact, the only person who was convicted during that process who has never been exonerated. She lived in the part of Andover that is North Andover today in my district. It is well known that 19 people were convicted of witchcraft and hanged that year. What is less well known, however, is that there were 11 others who were convicted but never executed. One escaped, two were pregnant, and the executions of the others were postponed because they had confessed. They would have been executed eventually, but the event came to an end before that happened. Starting in 1702, those who had been convicted but not executed started petitioning to have their convictions overturned. And by the end of 1711, all of them had been exonerated except for one, Elizabeth Johnson Jr. Why she was not exonerated is unclear, but no action was ever taken on her behalf by the General Assembly or the courts. And it was said that this was possibly the case because she was neither a wife nor a mother and therefore not considered worthy of having her name cleared. Elizabeth's story and struggle, friends, continue to greatly resonate today. And while we've come a long way since the horrors of the witch trials, women today still often face positions where their rights are challenged and concerns are dismissed. There continue to be great injustices with attacks on women and on their rights and on the rights of marginalized populations. It was unacceptable then and remains unacceptable now that she and other women have been considered unworthy of the dignity and respect they deserve. In the 20th and early 21st centuries, legislation was passed that cleared the names of those who were executed and had not been exonerated. But because Elizabeth was not hanged for her alleged crime, she was overlooked. Because she never had children, there's no group of descendants acting on her behalf, or that was at least the case before the North Andover Middle School stepped up to the plate. And this amazing group of middle school students in my district came to me and asked that we work on this issue together and asked that we file a piece of legislation to help to clear this woman's name so that she could finally receive the justice that she so deserves. Nothing can take away the sufferings that the accused and their families endured during the, sale, during, the, during the witch hunt. But Massachusetts has already formally exonerated 29 of the 30 people who were convicted of witchcraft in the course of that horrific event. It's time, friends, to exonerate one more. The last witch, Elizabeth Johnson, Jr. And this amendment would finally clear her name in the conviction she received during the Salem witch trials. Again, I was inspired to file this by one of our amazing civics teachers in her class in North Andover. I want to give a shout out to Carrie LaPierre, uh, the teacher whose students spent many months in countless classes researching Elizabeth's life and the steps that it would take to finally clear her name. They learned the process of writing a bill, drafting advocacy letters to legislators like everybody here, and created incredible detailed presentations about Elizabeth and her struggles. And I just visited this class about a week and a half ago, and they were in the middle of drafting postcards to the governor to ask him to support this piece of legislation, which I hope he does after we hopefully get this through conference committee. These students are to be celebrated for stepping up to the plate and having the courage to be a voice for someone who hasn't had a voice for so long. We're so grateful to them for their hard work and to incredible teachers like Carrie who empower students to be well-informed, active citizens, and give them the opportunity to change the world around us. The amendment before you would not be possible without their tireless efforts. I'm so proud of these students that they stood up and spoke up for justice, setting an example for us all. And now, a documentary spotlighting Elizabeth's story titled The Last Witch is in production featuring interviews with Carrie and her extraordinary students. And I hope you'll all take a watch. Um, 
But just to end and to conclude on this particular piece of legislation, this amendment today, look, we'll never be able to change what happened to victims like Elizabeth, but at the very least, we can set the record straight. If we don't right the wrongs of the past, we all know that history is doomed to repeat itself. So I do hope that my colleagues will support this amendment, and I thank you so much, Mr. President. The gentlelady from Middlesex and Norfolk, Ms. Kareem. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and I want to thank the Senator from First Essex for filing this important amendment to correct a longstanding historical wrong. Some may think that this is an obscure amendment. Some may think that this is not that important. But in the day and age that we are in now, in the Me Too movement, in the potential of Supreme Court decisions, we need to reflect historically how women were treated. And this is an important moment. I also want to thank Mrs. LaPere's eighth grade civic students at North Andover Middle School who brought this important issue to the legislature's attention and has been organizing for justice for Elizabeth Johnson, Jr. through the school year. Uh, you may wonder how I found out about it. Uh, everything is local. Uh, one of the students is a relative of my husband's, uh, and I was called uh, by the teacher to see um, if I was interested in this issue. I connected with the senator from First Essex, uh, and I'm not only interested, I'm outraged that we are at this point, at this time, talking about this amendment. The p mentioned previously, the amendment before us would clear the name of Elizabeth Johnson, Jr., a wom young woman who was convicted of witchcraft in 1693 during the Salem witch trials. And I will bring through my speech for you to understand that this is where we are facing right now. The then governor commuted Johnson's death sentence, but did so without overturning her conviction, which the Commonwealth never formally repudiated since 1693. It's 2022. Victims of the Salem witch trial have had their names cleared by the general court on several occasions, including the 1700s and in 1957 and in most recently in 2001. Who knows why J Johnson was not included in previous legislative efforts in exonerating the victims of witch trials? Some people have suspected she wasn't exonerated because she neither married Noah had children. Of course, that would be terrible and maybe a reason to not exonerate her. She had no descendants to advocate on her behalf. Of course, the fact that she was unmarried and childless is likely why she was targeted for accusations of witchcraft in the first place. Women in 1690 Salem were expected to fill narrowly understood roles of wife, mother, and homemaker. Sometimes I wonder if we've ever gotten away from that. Anyone who deviated from those rigid roles was considered suspect, immoral, dangerous, and were therefore vulnerable to accusations of witchcraft. From that perspective, we can understand the Salem witch trials as a moral panic about how some women chose to lead their lives and is an effort to restrict women's autonomy and control their choices about marriage and reproduction. We may no longer be convicting women of witchcraft, but it won't be lost on anyone in this chamber that efforts to control women's lives and bodies have persisted across the century and are there now. Indeed, in the leaked draft of the Supreme Court's opinion that would overturn Roe versus Wade, Justice Alito cites favorably the Matthew Hale, a 17th century English jurist who not only popularized the legal notion that a husband cannot rape his wife, but also presided over several trials in 1660 in which women were convicted of witchcraft and sentenced to hang. This is the same judge that is quoted in the leaked opinion by Judge Alito. The settlers in Salem 
would go on to model their own witch trials on the ones Hale held in England. Same issue. I hope this day we will vote to correct a 300-year-old injustice and clear the name of Elizabeth Johnson. As we consider the amendment before us, I hope we will reflect on the misogynistic notions of womanhood and female autonomy that led to Johnson's wrongful conviction. And I hope we will also reflect on how the same misogynist logic could lead to new injustices in the present day of 2022. Thank you. Ms. Lovely, if she's available. As we wait. Hello? That will be in order. The chair again recognizes the gentlelady from Essex, Ms. Lovely. Thank you, Mr. President, and through you to the members. I rise in support of Amendment 842, which would clear the name of Elizabeth Johnson of Salem, who was wrongfully convicted of practicing witchcraft during the Salem witch trials. I would like to first thank the gentle lady from Methuen for filing this important amendment. And I want to thank the students from North Andover Middle School who have worked tirelessly to bring justice to Elizabeth. The Salem witch trials was a time where paranoia and superstition spread throughout Salem and the region. Between 1692 and 1693, over 200 individuals were accused of practicing witchcraft and 20 were executed. So many individuals, mainly women, were wrong, wrongfully convicted. Many who were wrongfully convicted have since been pardoned, except for Elizabeth Johnson, who was only 22 when she was accused of being a witch. She was sentenced, sentenced to hang, but her punishment was thrown out by Governor Phipps as the magnitude of the hysteria sank in. However, to this day, her wrongful conviction still stands. And this amendment will finally clear her name, the last accused witch from the Salem witch trials to be exonerated. Elizabeth Johnson was a young woman caught up in the hysteria and superstition and fear of the 17th century. She was not a wife, she never became a mother, and she has never had descendants to advocate for her memory. I want to thank again the civic students from North Andover Middle School who pursued her case and pushed to see this last woman exonerated. It is time we give Elizabeth Johnson for justice and peace. Thank you, Mr. President. I hope the amendment is adopted. Question comes on adoption of the amendment. All those in favor say aye. Close no. The ayes have it and the amendment is adopted.